Good morning. As you can hear, we are using our indoor voices. We have just arrived to Gatwick Airport. We have found ourselves in one of the lovely lounges here. We're very lucky that one of Nick's friends drove us to the airport this morning. So thank you, Cy. That was really kind of you. We are just waiting for our flight, but in the meantime, we are going to have ourselves some breakfast and enjoy the facilities here in this lounge. away in one of these like little cubby holes that is kind of quiet and I suppose you could do some business in here and maybe take some calls have some meetings also it would be like a comfortable place to sleep like I mean this chair here I think it would extend pretty well but we thought we would do our lounge rating system before we have to head out and board our flight we're going to use the same and rating system as before so that is going to include ratings on food drink cleanliness comfort, comfort and amenities um, so for this one this is the club aspire lounge in gatwick south terminal Hi. and so yeah let's give you a rundown okay so starting with food we have rated it an 8 out of 10. Mm -hmm. We only had breakfast here, but as you will have seen, it was pretty comprehensive. It was pretty much a full English with the exception of like no mushrooms or tomatoes or anything. Yeah. And they offered a small continental selection as well. And it was delicious as well. Yeah. Obviously we haven't tried anything that they might offer for lunch. This particular lounge is only open until 2 p.m. I think Nick said. So they wouldn't be serving dinner, but I'm sure that their menu for lunch would be different. But for breakfast, we can confirm the food was really good, but we need to leave room for improvement, hence the 8 out of 10. Yeah. On to drinks, then. Obviously, because it is pretty early in the morning, we were really only interested in coffee, but if we wanted teas, then they had a selection of four different kinds available, catering for most types of taste. But then on top of that, they have a really nice beer, so Bira Moretti from Italy, which is a very good quality beer. They seem to have a pretty comprehensive wine selection as well, but also you could clearly see that they had a carefully curated selection of high quality spirits and also mixes as well. So all in all, definitely better than the previous offering that we saw at the Trotman Lounge. 
um, and all of it seemed to be included. Champagne was also available, but that would have come with a price, as you could probably expect. So, yeah, all in all, I think we give that a solid eight. And also on the coffee run, because we are a bit of coffee snobs, they had one of those machines, and you could pick an espresso, double espresso, a flat white, a cappuccino, a latte, an americano. They had a ton of selection with the coffee, which was great. All of them were with dairy milk. However, if you were just getting like an americano and you asked at the bar, then they had a selection of soy milk or oat milk for you to choose from. So I found that very helpful. And the coffee was very nice as well. Just like with the Toronto Lounge, this Gatwick Aspire South Terminal Lounge, very clean, so 9 out of 10. I don't really know what it's going to take to get a 10 out of 10, but I think 9 out of 10 may be our highest, or unless it's absolutely the most exceptional lounge in the world, but there Don't you go. like floors you can eat off of or something like that, but yeah, we haven't seen that just yet. We'll see. <laughs> Next one is comfort. So definitely with this one, it hasn't felt anywhere near as claustrophobic, which is lovely. Uh, definitely feel like you had a lot more space to roam around in, which was lovely. With the quality of the chairs that you were sat in, I'm not sure if you'd want to do that for like a solid few hours at a time because I feel like definitely my bottom was feeling a little bit numb afterwards. But the great news is if you want to try and find better comfort elsewhere, then you also have these little booths to be able to take advantage of. So definitely a step up from uh, the previous lounge that we went to, which we rated a 6. So with this one, we're going to go with a 7 because definitely like this is a nice place to sit, but I'm not sure if it'd be the most comfortable place to like maybe have a kip or anything like that. Yeah, like I don't think there's a comfortable place to lie down, mm -hmm. but certainly that it's nice because they have variety in their seating. Like we just kind of sat where you would eat in the food area, so it was just like bench seating and chairs, but then they had another room which was more like couch and everything, and even on the window side of the dining room section, they had these chairs that looked out to where the planes were all parked mm -hmm. and they looked more comfortable and of course the chair that we're in now is more comfortable so again still probably not the most comfortable lounge mm -hmm. in the world because it's not offering you like a sleeping facility but no but i think the great thing about having like having the windows and having that view out was also that it just kind of removed any sense of claustrophobia uh, which was really really good we felt like quite hemmed in with the last lounge we were in mm -hmm. so by comparison, this just felt so much more spacious, like you could breathe a bit better. So, yeah, solid seven on that one. And lastly, amenities. We rated the Toronto Lounge a six, and again, this one doesn't have a huge amount of amenities, but we just like this one slightly better, so we're rating it a seven. This also has a shower room if you request it. It has free Wi-Fi. You can charge all of your devices here. Also, I guess with amenities, this kind of section where you can do business or have a quiet room and these little cubicles, it does make it better. It is an amenity, and I mean, even up there, which you can't see, there's like a little reading light and stuff, so it, there are a few more details. Okay, so the grand total for the Aspire Club Lounge at Gatwick South Terminal is, drumroll please. Okay, my math is really bad. I need to focus and concentrate. 8 plus 8 is 16, plus 9 is 25, plus 7 is 32. So 39 out of 40. No, 39 out of 50, not 40. Come on. <laughs> so, so far, this is at the top of our list of two whole lounges.
so we have arrived in seemingly our favorite airport in the world. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back in Lisbon. We're transiting through here in order to get on to our final destination. This is also a free flight for us. This is the final remnant of that 900 euro credit we have with we'll Tap Air Portugal. So from now on, we're going to have to pay for flights. What? Who wants to do that? Ew. Oh. Sure. Oh. Thank God we have points. First category that we've got is food, and honestly, yeah, it was a really good selection of just kind of little, little bites, I guess. So you have like small sandwiches, you had um, small fried goods and all that kind of stuff, um, and on top of that, I think you had an option of soup and a couple of extra bits here and there. So it was good. Um, some more hot food would have been quite nice, but I think in terms of the overall quality, then you can't really argue with it. So I'll, I think we put that as a solid seven in that one. In terms of drinks, we rated it the same as the Gatwick Lounge this morning. I bet you didn't think you were going to get two lounge reviews in one video, but here we are. Mm -hmm. They also had coffee, uh, but they would make it for you instead of it coming out of a machine. I mean, it still comes out of a machine, but well, yeah. it's made for you. Yes. They also had two, not vending machines, oh, refrigerators, commercial yeah. refrigerators, mm -hmm. full of juice and pop and water that you could just help yourself to. And they had a ton of wine and spirits that were complimentary. The wine was self-serve, so you could actually take as much as you wanted. So it had a really good selection, like the Lounge and Gap, like definitely more than in Toronto. So we rated that an 8 out of 10. Next up, cleanliness. Now, in comparison to the other two lounges that we've been to so far, then you did kind of get the sense that there was some stuff left on the floor and some parts were a bit dusty so it could have been perhaps a little bit better um so we felt like this was a little bit worse than the other two lounges we've been to previously so we put this one as seven next up is comfort and we rated this the same as the lounge in toronto now this lounge is definitely bigger but there were just so many people in it that you still got that claustrophobic feeling. It was about the same level of lightness as in Toronto, definitely less airy feeling yeah. than in Gatwick. Yeah. I think, and I feel like the, with this particular lounge, it just suffers from being like the only, like one of the only ones that's available. 
And because of that, then it just means that everybody is crowding into it, which does obviously lead to that whole cost problem that you mentioned. And also in regards to the chairs and seating options that are available, it all just seemed very basic. So you had just tables and chairs in the restaurant and the chairs that were available, whether it be by the window or in the center of the room, they were kind of a bit hard, nothing plush or soft. So that's why we are rating Comfort a 6 out of 10. Finally, we get on to amenities. We've written down one score, but I think I'm going to bump this one up because of a couple of things I saw. Um, so generally speaking, you know, you've got the Wi-Fi, you've got fridges, you've got all of that kind of stuff, which is really, really great. You obviously got showers, even a smoking room, I thought, uh, might if you're that way inclined. So that was kind of interesting. But the other main thing that I saw, which was kind of interesting, also was a resting room, a dedicated resting room which was, I thought, a really neat touch for those who are like going on layovers and need a bit of, a bit of added comfort in order to try and sleep. And I thought that was a beautiful thing to have that kind of own separate area. So, uh, so with that then, I think I'm going to put that at seven. That's a surprise. I did not see the resting room, but I agree. If they have that, that's something that the other lounges haven't had. And so it deserves a little bump up. Exactly. So that means that the scores on the doors for this one are how much? 15, 22, 28, 30, 5. out of 50. Solid. So it ranks right in the middle of the two. There we go. Welcome to Italy. We are in Rome and it is the first time that I have been in this country so I am super excited for this. And I've been twice before but it's been 13 years since my last visit and I'm most excited to see Nick's reaction to everything actually. I'm really really looking forward to um, experiencing all of this together. Should be awesome. Absolutely. So we are at Baggage Reclaim right now just waiting for the carousels to get started. And um, once that happens, then we'll get the train into the centre of Rome uh, because thankfully our hostel is not that far away from the station. So we'll go from there. airport we took an eight euro bus to the main train station in Rome and our hostel was a five ten minute walk from there so we're about to go check in. Really looking forward to exploring Rome properly tomorrow but we're gonna turn in so until next time take care. And keep smiling.